This is Nothing OS 4 and this is Nothing OS 3. Visually, there's no difference at all. Absolutely nothing. In fact, when I installed the Nothing OS 4 on my phone, my teammate didn't even believe that it's the latest version. I had to open the About page to prove it to him. So visually and feature-wise, there's very little to talk about. But still, there are some interesting things that are hidden here and there. And a very cool concept that I think only nothing can pull off. I'll talk about everything. Let's get started. Okay, so the very first thing I noticed is that the app opening and closing animations are slightly smoother than before. Now that every OS is focused on it and it does make the overall usage experience more enjoyable, I think it's a very good baby step. Next is this extra dark mode which is basically dark mode done right. See, earlier nothing's dark mode was not confident enough and it was kind of grey. But now, with this extra dark mode, you can turn everything pitch black the way you always wanted. Again, a welcome baby step. Pop-up you also got this update where you can now keep two pop-up apps open at a time and you can also switch between them easily. And in case you want them gone, you can just hide them with this gesture Kang, yeah? Huh? Ah and bring them back with this. Now, if I talk about the quick settings, there are some minor tweaks here and there. First up, you can now turn any option in 2x2, which was earlier reserved exclusively for Bluetooth only. I'm not sure why. This basically means that you can now have more freedom to customize the way you want, and it could also be useful for elders for better viewability. Secondly, whenever you toggle anything, be it torch or Bluetooth, you also get a text notification right here, which was not there before. As we are more used to scroll vertically, the Bluetooth toggle also scrolls vertically. The Wi-Fi icon also shows a share button next to it, which saves you a couple of extra taps. By the way, nothing is also cutting back on red color. Not sure why. Past trauma? I don't know. The torch icon is not completely red anymore. The remove icon is also not red enough and it's also moved to the left side now. And yeah, the brightness slider is a bit more smoother now. The recorder app is also redesigned where it just swapped vinyl from top to bottom and although it does look good, but it's not as fun as before because earlier you could interact with it like a DJ but not anymore. I don't know what made them do that because this change was not at all required. It's a classic case of developers getting bored. And oh, there's also this new option where you can use the recording light at the back to indicate recording, but it's not working for us as of yet. In lock screen, you get two new clock faces. One seemed to be inspired from iPhone 17 Pro font and the other one from iPhone Air font. But nevertheless, they do look good. And when the phone is transitioning from lock screen to AOD, the transition is smooth and there's no blinking, which used to happen before. Now, up until now, it was just tweaking here and there. But one very interesting thing that nothing has come up with is essential apps. It's actually a cool concept where anyone can create their own apps with just the prompts. And not just create, they can also share it publicly so that anyone who's interested can also install these apps on their nothing phone. Now, this all sounds insane, right? But there's a catch. And the catch is, right now, you can only make widgets with it. The proper app functionality might come next year or maybe the year after that, but still, I think it's a very good approach from nothing and I hope they build more on that. And if I just show you what others have created, you will see some super cool and creative ones like water intake reminder, calculators, flight reminders, dice roller, mini games like Flappy Bird, 2048 and many more. See, I always like nothing's approach of shareability with features like EQ profile sharing, sharing widgets for stuff like step counters, camera presets, and essential apps can be the next big step in the same direction. Now, coming to the settings app, the first thing you'll notice is that the about page wants you to see the entire phone and in that effort, eats up more than half the page. So for all the essential stuff, you will have to scroll. There's also this new app optimization feature that ensures that all your apps launch faster. You just have to tap here and it shall do that. Last and probably not the least, there's now an AI usage page that shows you how many times each AI model has been used, but the thing is, you can't control anything here. And yeah, there's also this AI indicator that will show up in the status bar whenever any AI model is being used. I think it's a nice touch. So yeah, that's pretty much everything about the Nothing OS 4.0. There's obviously not a lot has changed, and that's why I think it's one of the most boring updates ever. And now that Oxygen OS 16 and Origin OS is also coming pretty soon, and they're expected to come with a lot of features, I think Nothing should have pushed a lot harder on this update. In fact, there are a lot of essential features that are still missing, like better haptic integration, more native apps, redesigned camera app, and all the features that they promised in gallery app in nothing OS 3.0. But for now, it is what it is. So yeah, that's it for this video. What do you think about nothing OS 4.0? Tell us in the comments and what features do you want in the next nothing OS update? Maybe you can write that down in the comments. Maybe they'll get added, maybe not. We don't know, but give it a try. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.